How are you? Welcome to Critical Moves of Telesur. Europe needs gas and Russia has it. This is the title of an article that we're going to recommend. Of the geopolitical battle that is now going on in, the, in, Euro in Europe and, what they've tried, and all the opposition, this is what we're going to be speaking about today. Let's begin. What have the leaders said about these uh, gas projects? This is what they've said. I hope that by the end of this year, or the first trimester of next year, the work will be finished and the gas pipeline will begin to work. The supply of gas through to string will be of great importance, not only for the Turkish community and the community of the Black Sea, but they'd always have an impact on the, on the development of many countries of the south of Europe. The Tour Extreme, a project in which we will have worked very hard with our Russian friends, is historic, both for our bilateral relationships as well as for the context of the, of the oil. To develop our gas today, we are working on how to improve and how to produce more, both on land and in sea. Our objective is to make of our country a world center of energy. With all of the implication and discussions, the Nord Stream 2 is an economic project, and therefore we think it's correct. The companies involved have committed themselves, and I think it's important to complete the Nord Stream 2 regardless of all, the, all of the punishments. I want to make clear, regardless of all of the controversy with the United States, that I do not agree with the sanctions that are beyond borders. Therefore, we keep on supporting the project. I think that after the United States has shown once again that their, that their diplomacy limits themselves and that they only care for their economy, no country will doubt that if a United States has promised something, they will not do it. Let's see a map of these gas uh, of these gas Turkish projects Turkish stream and Nord Stream 2 they're both ambitious projects of gas of Russia Turkish stream a victory for Russia and Turkey just uh, the, two days ago Turkish stream began spread all the way from Turkey to Russia it begins uh, in, a, in a store in a city next next to the next Turkey and then it goes to Istanbul the gas pipeline goes through the Black Sea in in Russian waters, then, be, then go into the Turkish, then it continues for many kilometers more. All of the line that is under the sea has two parallel pipelines. One of them it goes to the existent gas line, and the other will continue all the way to the frontier of Turkey and Europe, and it will connect to the Trans-Balkanic gas line. It has the capacity of passing 31,000 million Nord Stream 2, Nord Stream 2 it's, a, it's a well sought for uh, project that has been a um, conjoint effort out of Austria, Germany, France, and Russia, has two strings underneath the Baltic Sea to transport 55,000 mil million of uh, square meters of natural gas. It will go underneath uh, Finland, Switzerland, and Denmark. Well, uh, let's see uh, digital websites that speak about this. For example, Sputnik, this is of January 13. Russia is doing away with the gas project. The United States is losing their effort of trying to kick out Russia from the, from the market. On the contrary, they, it's a, becoming a superpower in energy. At the same time, the Russian currency is becoming stronger that directly has to do with the solid, uh, solid how solid the the market is this is Carlos Puente Martinez the tendency is also due to the to this uh, to this new other gas gas line this uh, project also has a great importance and also geopolitical importance
Prensa Latina, la agencia de Prensa Latina también titula, also has a title that says Russia announces the arrival of gas through through Turkish Stream. Russia confirms on the 5th of January the arrival to, to Greece and North Macedonia uh, through the Nord Stream. The, this will go through Bulgaria and this will uh, help uh, save money in all of this. Durante una conferencia con empresarios en el club de discusión Valdai en diciembre pasado, el presidente ruso The president, the Russian president, also spoke about Bulgaria that was not helping, and they they said that they would finish with or without him. Russia is also doing the, his own thing. And they think that they should circulate 55 square kilometers of square meters of, uh, of gas. In the case of Nord Storm 2, that will that will join through the Baltic Sea, old seas set, is, that is in charge of putting the the pipeline. But Russia can finish this with their own with their own money. However, on December 30th, Russia considers that the functioning depends on the how well Kiev keeps up with their with their side of the deal. This is Ukraine. I recommend this uh, piece that I was speaking about. Turkey needs gas, Russia has it, and this is written by, this was published on the 9th of Aero News. A political gain for Russia and an economic gain for Turkey. This is the Turk Stream uh, gas line. This is the, all of the best for Russia because this goes around Ukraine, with which they have a, a conflict since 2014. Meanwhile, they become a, a very important center of information in Occident, sanctions against Russia for the annexation of the annexation of Crimea and the wars in Libya and Syria. All of this is in the midst of all of the conflicts that ha there's Russia because of the annexation of Crimea. And the question is, who is the winner and who is the loser? The author is Jasmine Balmy. Turk Scream will create uh, winners and losers. Some of the countries that are winners are those who participate in the construction and extension of the gas line. Bulgaria, Serbia, Turkey. The losers include Poland and some Baltic countries as well as Slovakia. Another one is what does it mean for the gas security of Europe? The increasing need of gas and especially the decrease in this local production is what it makes it even more important to import. But the question still lies on where will Europe get it? Russia? or the global markets. The blockade of Qatar may also have the, the way of blocking the supply to Europe. The Turk Stream offers the European countries an option in case that this may occur. There's much more, and this is uh, why we want to go a bit more in depth, especially when we have that from last December, uh, United States has put their hands a bit more through a law. This is what we're going to speak about in our strategic move. United States have approved in December the NDAA, that is a law to defend and protect the, the energy, the energy, the security energy of Europe. 
What is uh, really bothering the United States? Uh, we would like you to participate with us. Please participate with us. We would like to hear your opinion. Let's go to a pause and we'll be right back. Well, last December, as we told you before the pause, the United States has announced all the expenses that will be destined for uh, defense through the law NDAA. Let's see what it's about. The law to authorize the security defense called NDAA is the, is the law that will allow and specify how much the expenses will be for the yearly for the yearly meeting it also speaks about who are going to be the the levels of financing and the policy in which the money will be used on december they he approved the law for 2020 for 700 billion dollars there will be an increase of defense to 20, 000, to 20 billion dollars the extent uh, law has has arisen all of the protest in the world because it has uh, punishment against Russia and Turkey this law says that the NDAA protects the energy security of Europe when when speaking about the Nord Stream Geisland and Nord Stream it also renovates the the will to renovate the NDAA authorizes money to discretional funds for the Pentagon. And all of this for the nuclear department too. Let's start the analysis. Let's connect with Fernando Aragón, an expert in geopolitics, to help us understand what is behind this law that has just been issued by the United States against Turkey and Russia. But before, uh, I want to greet Fernando to our critical moves. And before, I want to begin from the beginning. Several news media have replicated that that what it was inaugurated in January 8 between the president of Russia and Turkey is a victory for the geopolitics stand. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. And it's, um, it's a victory geopolitics for Russia and economic for for Turkey. We'll have the opportunity to speak about this because as you well know the European Union doesn't have much of unity. Because they don't uh, the truth is that they never follow, they never abide with the things they agree. And we are going to reach agreements. Just like the case of Poland. But what is the, how can they block this gas project? Well, the reason is very clear. For example, the United States, who has always been an importer, 
and through the fracking, which is a method to to get a low level um, low level fuels and contaminate a lot and produces uh, earthquakes. It is so questioned that Great Britain has prohibited, and in this sense, it's not any it, it's not good for the environment. So it so happens that they are taking out gas and they first became dependent and then exporters. And from there, they get natural gas that is transported. And this gas is taken So the gas So the gas is uh, much more expensive like in the case of Nord Stream directly from Russia and Germany uh, through the through the undersea gas line and same thing for the Turkish stream that goes through the Black Sea directly from Russia to Turkey uh, so they cannot compete with Russia. What is the answer that they have? As always, the United States. They will go over any law and impose sanctions. And this is what we're seeing now. The sanctions are what we see now. Why? The United States is practically defending their interests in this region, but they really don't care about it. Um, their gas is much more expensive. So. So to Europe, it's it's much viable and better to negotiate with Russia. This is why it's uh, curious to see that when the U.S. wants to defend commerce, when they do con the contrary. And when that happens, they even impose sanctions to punish. And they send um, they send uh, punishment to other countries, and this is the case of Nord Stream. The pressure to Germany has been incredible, and now Russia has to buy, uh, Germany has to buy from Russia. They cannot change it. Basically, because. Basically, because the United States imposes laws, and there is a problem that some country have been said, listen, bring your natural gas. And what they do is they're trying to they're really trying to tick off Germany. Why is Poland adding up to this war of the United States? I don't know if you can hear me. Well, at the end, Russia, since it was a law against Russia, what they've done is uh, in a very wise way. They said, okay, well, let's do it through Turkey because they can't impose it to Turkey because our gas goes to Turkey. And from Turkey, we can export it to Europe. And they imposed the, the sanctions to those countries who don't do what they want. Before this, maybe I was asking you something, maybe you didn't hear me. There is an aspect that we have as a question. Why is Poland adding to this policy of the U.S.? They say that maybe to have war against, uh, uh, against Germany. What is the conflict between these two countries? Well, it's not a conflict with Germany. It's a conflict with Russia. 
Poland historically and ever since the crisis in Ukraine is uh, anti-Russia. This country, uh, Russia has a, Poland has an extreme right wing uh, government. So everything that comes from Russia. Let's not forget that Poland is the first country in the history of the European Union that is in the process of, uh, of sanction because of lack of democracy, because the government has made it impossible, the constitutional tribunal. This means that some countries, not all of them, but some countries of Europe, even the European Commission, recognize that they are they're not really democratic and they anti-Russia. And this is the main reason why the Polish has become an ally of U.S. in, in the Europe. And when it comes to introducing troops, uh, anything that has to do in being against Russia, they welcome it. And this is very interesting. <laughs> Following with the topic of the sanctions, everything seems to point that it's, uh, that it's not going to be such a problem for Russia, maybe a bit more for Turkey, but Russia is very strong with these two projects. Yes, in fact, Russia with this is able to attain that they are not dependent of, U of Ukraine for the passage of their, of their gas, although there are still gas passing through Ukraine and they have a, a, an agreement that is positive, so a part can pass. And this can be the beginning for there be two agreements of Minsk. And if we recover the relationship between Ukraine and Russia, although this might take a long time, but of course celebrating because this uh, this stops the conflictivity with this country. This has been done twice before. So with this, they guarantee the energetic security. And let's not forget, we don't have much many opportunities that are nearby. And let's not forget that several countries are dependent on uh, on gas from Spain goes to our cheers. And many go to the north of Africa, but there is chaos in Libya caused by the United States. Many jihadists are running all around. And so Spain wants to diversify their sources, and now uh, we buy gas to Russia. However, they do bring us uh, gas directly all the way to Spain. And through them, since last year, there is natural gas to Spain to diversify the supply. And it won't happen that if there is a problem in Algeria, so we have to bear this in mind. Let's not forget that we were dependent on the Russians because they were the, the closest one. Let's not forget that the major exporter of gas is Russia. Up until the sanctions to Iran, it was Iran, then Qatar, then Turkmenistan. So it's fundamental. It is necessary to bear in mind Russia. Well, the United States and their declared war, well, this hybrid war against Russia through the economic war, the sanctions. They also want to, they all want to hinder Germany. This obviously 
regardless for this is not viable they need the russian support and this obviously takes to a major dependency of russia going back to the topic of ukraine what is, what do you think about the most recent administration that is governing this country. I'm speaking of Zelensky, that has uh, been willing to dialogue with the Russian authorities. For nobody, it's a secret that uh, there have been governments that are more aligned to the policies of the White House. But now, this one that is directed by Kiev is a bit more uh, flexible. What can be the outcome of all this? And there's something evident, which is the isolation of Ukraine. Well, let's not forget let's not forget that is uh, we have the senator John McCain also giving candy to the protesters just imagine if uh, somebody of Russia goes to Mexico to provoke a change of government and a senator of Russia goes to give away candies in favor of the protesters, in favor of the United States, and to make whole meetings. And apart from supporting with money, the result is that is a consequence. Poroshenko was an oligarch. He was an oligarch of chocolate. At the end, he was a disaster. And this makes you think how Zelensky reached the presidency. He was an actor. But the thing is that there was a rejection to Proshenko. And this was the this was the reaction. We prefer a comic that tells us things how they are, how he believes them. And this was how he was elected. And I think this is a positive step. Because they have they have signed an agreement. This is the first one that has been signed since the crisis of the Maidan. This is the first one between Russia and uh, and there's going to be a part that goes through Germany. Let's not forget that Germany was supplied by Russia and that they do their connections part of this uh, part of this has been taken to to America and this is a positive step I think in fact that there's a lot of conflict we can't expect great advancements but let the elite meet well, these are favorable steps. We have to give some time. I hope there's no conflict. There is some situation there. And it's hard. For now, I think we must be... Well, Russia has been a complementary economy. And I think that this is good. And to maintain a commercial relation with Russia. And unfortunately, they have not been able to get much from for the other. 
discrete steps. We can't ask much from this conflictive relationship. Let's not forget that Kiev is still uh, is still hurting in in Ukraine. Thank you, Fernando. Let's establish another pause in our critical move, but before we have a strategic uh, question. Here we have, and in, there was the DAAA that defends the, the European energy defense. What really is um, is bothering the United States? Tell us what you think. When we're back, we keep on speaking about this topic with our next guest. The gas projects of Russia. How are things going? How are they reorganizing the geopolitics in in Russia and uh, in Europe with the Nord Stream 2 and the Turk Stream that is already working? Uh, we're going to be talking with Hernan Vargas. He's an international analyst. And he's part of the people of Venezuela. Hernan, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. Now we're going to see this huge uh, country, but we also, but we also have to see what's going on in the United States. Now they're dictating sanctions, and this uh, new sanction of Washington. Well, without a doubt, in the last time of the foreign policy of the United States has been marked by sanctions simultaneously. It's a, uh, it's a uh, very close to the. Cold War, the United States now has a central point to sanction countries that are not doing what they want. Then you have Iran, Turkey, Tur uh, China, Korea, all of the countries that don't want to be part of this group. And it seems it's a strategic, um, it's a strategic measure because there is a a global framework by which United States' effort not to lose their 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 ruling that had for the past thirty years had not been questioned and now some authors are even speaking of a transition. Maybe a transition to China, Russia. I think we're in the midst of the battle where the United States will not let go of this ruling. We saw how there was a coup d'etat in Bolivia and Venezuela. It said that um, the United States foresees to change their policy, uh, their policy in terms of what's going on with Venezuela. They're not. What they're saying is not all of the apps on the table, but they are going to make the sanctions even worse against Venezuela, especially, especially because the United States has just, said, has just noticed the strong collaboration that Venezuela has, both with Russia and Cuba. If you make a balance, just like the one President Maduro is doing, you can see that last year was a very strong year of many battles, being Venezuela so small in the context. And uh, you can see a first communication of the of the, of the White House. You can see that they are going to change the orientation because now they're asking for a national dialogue, a consensus. That is what we were trying during 2019. But this does not uh, free from fair elections. And this is what they've always said. This is one of the most important, most interesting things. You can see that the United States, as one of the main architects of the 
bourgeois uh, society, they are now at a circumstance where this uh, state that uh, they themselves designed doesn't work anymore for them. Do you think this is a defeat? Well, yes. I think this this could feel that the fact is that what we say is a giant that is in despair, uh, that uh, being despair, they're trying to force things. What we see with Nord Stream and Turk Stream what we see is that they take out the gun and try to force their allies because they're doing this to the to their allies. Germany is one of their main allies in all of the advance against Venezuela, against uh, them. And uh, regardless of that, they're also going to push them around. Spain itself. And in general, it's against Europe. And this is a very grave scenario because the European Union is a bloc. And what they're trying to do is uh, to have certain certain control over their maneuvers. And the United States is interrupting this. And this would be uh, based on protecting the security. And the European Union is not doesn't agree with this. And of course, uh, what you're speaking about, it implies of the United States that every time is not, uh, doesn't find that the international law isn't useful for them. And so they start in a period of bullying and they need to sanction everybody. And they're and they become transparent every time more. And what they do is that they uh, attempt against the security of the United States. And could you explain how the these gas projects attempt against the security of the U.S.? Or is it that, um, that the U.S. now has headquarters in the Black Sea? Well, the thing is that the reality is that uh, it is more more revealed that because what they say is that our security is the world control. And if the Russians control more than they do, the supply of gas for all of the European countries, they attend against our, our dominion. Because what they're trying to do is to break with this hegemony that the Russians have to try to generate and position the market of the liquefied gas that is very low, but but they're trying to displace it. But above all is to break the hegemony of the Russians. And there, there is uh, countries that, that play at double sides. And on the side of, of Spain, they also want to break it and to open the doors to uh, a gas that they consume. Argelia can be an option. And what we see is that uh, just recently they're looking more at Russia. Well, it's a game that is similar that forces the United States and the continent that puts them in an, uh, in an agenda that is anti-sovereignty and they have to make a decision to see if they are political operator. In the case of Europe, it's very clear. Uh, well, Russia is the most logical is the most logical business, and that's why the United States has to take out, take out the gun and try to break this uh, this business. Let's speak about Turkey. That is a traditional ally with the U.S. But just recently, in the ten in the past years, they've given their back because when there was this attempt of coup d'état against uh, Erdogan. Um, 
Turkey has seen to the other sides more than the United States. Well, I think that Turkey, I think that Turkey has seen that the United States is unstable and that there's a reorganization in the world politics. And there's an axis of the peripheric uh, countries of the 21st century. And, and you'll see um, a BRICS plus Indonesia and Turkey that once the hegemony is falling, and this is what happens and you see an alliance that necessarily is ideological this is just strategic and around a world that is reconfiguring and some countries are emerging the concrete thing is that there's a political force that are beginning to see and there the United States is they're going to keep on having sanctions and working with the CIA to try to de weaken and what we see is uh, the Turkish uh, case is very in uh, interesting. For example, uh, Turkey is on one side and Russia is on the other in the, in the case of Syria. And what is happening now and uh, regardless of their differences they are able to sit at the table and say yes our project will continue they have an enormous capacity. Let's not forget that Russia has an important control in terms of artificial, of artificial intelligence. And China has a fundamental advance in 5G. So we're speaking of a pole that is being controlled, uh, is controlling the Cold War. I insist once again, without being... And we know that Eurasia knows that the world is moving, and the United States will have to keep on taking out their guns all the time. <laughs> well, here we have the, the recent response of Iran. Every time the United States sees that they are no longer the power and, and that they cannot do bullying. Thank you very much for coming. Let's go to our conclusions. As you can see, there are not few um, obstacles of Putin to continue distributing gas through Europe, mainly because this means to evade Ukraine and after, and that they've uh, aligned with the U.S. The leaders of the European Union that knows about the, the about the policies and clear about the utility of having an alliance are now uh, are now talking about it. For now, this is all. We'll be back tomorrow.